Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation we'll look at iTeach Alignment. Now, this program is actually available as part of iLearn Alignment and for alignment training, whether it's as an alignment product or as part of our vibration courses, we've got so many animations that explain the alignment process, what misalignment means, all kinds of things. We've really got a lot of material. But anyway, we're here to talk about simulators. This simulator basically has two modes of operation. First is that here we're looking down on a motor coupled to a pump, and here's the side view of the motor coupled to a pump. And what we can do is say, what happens if we, if we can tighten this, or we can you know, release this one so it pushes this this way, and of course this one allows it, and we move the back as well, and we can add shims. So we can either do this in metric or imperial, but we can add some shims here, and you know, add a bigger shim there, and, and click on them to make them go away. But either way, we have now adjusted the alignment state, and we can look at it in a couple of forms. So this is a sort of a 3D view, which is a little bit slow when it's in movie recording mode, but we can see sort of in a 3D mode what we've just done from an end view, the side view, and the top view. You can see the misalignment there. And of course, if you couple those together, you can just imagine the forces on the coupling, the shaft, the bearing, seals, and, and so on. So in this mode of operation, all we're doing is, is visually seeing what happens as you misalign a machine. But now what we can do is go and align it with dial indicators. So here we have uh, two different reverse dial options, just different configurations for the dials, or we can use the rim and face method. And if we're not sure, you know, what these methods mean, we can see just this little movie here to see, you know, how they're set up and just to get an idea. And again, this is moving a little bit strangely because I'm recording at the same time. But anyway, there you go. So let's let's use that method. Now the first thing it's going to do is say, okay, well you need to enter the dimensions of this machine. So I'll say that's 20, that's 20, that's, let's just call that 20 as well. And so we just put in the dimensions, whatever dimensions you wish to put in. And then it says, okay, the first thing I want you to do is do a bar sag test. So we're going to put the same brackets on as you've got it, put it on bar stock, rotate it around and see how much the needle moves so I'll do that I can leave it there I guess and say that that reading was minus six whatever just whatever values just try some values here and now it's going to say right now we have to set up and zero the dials at at 12 o'clock so that's just giving us a movie to explain what we're doing so now we will from that 12 o'clock position we'll rotate them around to six o'clock and enter the readings. Well, I'll just enter in a couple of numbers here. And then it says, okay, now I want you to put the dials at uh, the three o'clock position and zero the dials. So we'll do that. And then we'll rotate them to the nine o'clock position and enter the readings. So let's just put in some numbers here and see what results we get. So that's it. Now we've taken all the readings, we've gone through the steps, we go next, and it calculates the uh, the solution here. So it shows us that actually we need to lift the front feet. Now this is um, an imperial, I guess. It, I, you can put it in any units, but we need to lift at 15, lift at 40, drop the... So that's... Um, sorry, not lift it. That's the we're looking down on the machine so we have to move it across that much. You can see that visually the motor is towards us so we have to push it away by this 15 and by the 40. Here you can see that it's up high so we need to drop it down 16.5 and 31.5 and we can do that in um, another way we can show it as a graphical so here we have to again move that component around and in the horizontal sense, well, maybe that was horizontal, here we had to drop the, the feet down. And we can do all kinds of things in here. We can put in the bolt bound restrictions and base bound restrictions. We can say, well, what if we couldn't move it and we'll 
uh, move the pump instead and we can play around with all kinds of things but basically it's just a, a good way of explaining how the alignment process works with dial indicators we can put in the readings it does the calculations and it visualizes it helps us visualize what's what's actually happening so that was I teach alignment as I mentioned if you buy I learn alignment you actually get that that program um, but uh, I hope you found it interesting and thank you very much for taking the time to view this presentation.